What if I told you there was an RPG where you can interact with everything in the world? What if I told you that every action that you do in this RPG will have literal consequences? What if I told you that in this game, every single action have different outcomes in every single walkthrough? What if I told you that you can play this game with your friend on the same screen? What if I told you that in this RPG, you can spend hours and hours and hours of time without even realizing how it went? and going deeper and deeper into this vast world. But what if I told you despite all of this, you might still not want to play such a game? Well, this game is Divinity Original Sin. And as you understood, we're going to be talking about that game in this video. Divinity Original Sin is actually a Kickstarter game that came out in 2014 and got its enhanced edition in 2016. And we're going to be talking about this enhanced edition. It is an isometric RPG, which is happening in Divinity Universe. If you have played any of the other Divinity games, like Divine Divinity, yeah, it's basically the same universe. And in this game, you play as a pair of source hunters, basically a members of order who are hunting sorcerers. Well, not sorcerers, but sorcerers. They're two different things. And those sorcerers are the individuals who are controlling the source, the huge and very powerful magical energies capable of destroying the entire universe. And well, your order's goal is basically to hunt those guys. You start this game by having a mission to investigate the mysterious murder in one of the towns and quickly the story transforms into something larger. Which, of course, in a fantasy universe involves some kind of world destruction and a universe destruction and you being a chosen one. To be fair, the story is pretty good, but it's pretty generic and pretty cliche. But you're gonna enjoy it nonetheless. But what you can expect from this game. Let's say you got this game, you turn it on. What is it actually? Well, first you start the game with the creation of the characters. Yes, you are creating two characters. And this is the first time well, you will be hit with the barrage of choice. You see, this is actually a D&D type of game, meaning that every single thing about your character is actually customizable. And I'm, I'm, not, and I'm not talking about just looks. I'm talking about every single thing that your character can do is capable to do is customizable. From all the stats, all the attributes, all the skills, every single thing can be customizable. And to be fair, at first it might be a bit overwhelming. However, you can actually choose some of the pre-made classes as well, which makes it a bit easier to choose. So after you do this, you're plunged into the game and you are controlling this pair of source hunters. And immediately when you start the game, you immediately understand how interactive this entire world is. Trust me, if you did not grow on the older games, you have not seen the interactivity like this one. Every single item in this game, every single thing that you will see around this game is actually interactive. Every single thing can be picked up and moved and interacted with, and it and every single thing is actually usable even during the combat. You see the puddle of water? Well, you can actually use the puddle of water in a combat. You see an oil barrel? You can use that. You see a crate? You can use that. You see a boulder? You can use that. You can actually interact with every single thing in the world, which is amazing and a bit overwhelming at first. The world is incredibly large and incredibly alive. Every single character is actually voice acted, which is the one of the biggest differences between classic edition and enhanced edition. Well, not every single character was actually voice acted and majority of the story was delivered through the text. Now you can actually listen. Almost every single character that you will encounter have some type of story, have some kind of job, have some type of quest or things like that. Especially when you go to the first city, you will realize how rich and vast this world is. The city is alive. You can, you can understand this by listening how merchants are selling different stuff. You can understand how soldiers are training. Every single thing is alive and you're encountering different well, encounters which can transform into the quest. And during none of it, game is actually holding your hand or forcing you to do anything. You can just go past two individuals arguing and not do anything or just go them and interact with them. The dialogue is pretty interesting. If you played any of the Bioware games or even Elder Scrolls games, you might feel exactly like home. You, dis you talk with an NPC, discuss different things, react to different things. However, almost every single important encounter has the choice at the end. 
or in the middle sometimes. And the choice is how you can actually continue the interaction. For example, in one of the early game encounters, you will see how actually two soldiers actually caged one woman and decided what to do with her. When, when you come to them, they tell you that this woman just came out from the forest and attacked the soldier out of the blue. And uh, you actually found out, you actually find out that this woman is actually some kind of feral woman who grew up with the bears. And now you have a choice. You have a choice either to take this woman under your wing and she will actually become your party member or you can just ignore them and most likely she will be executed or something like that. An interesting thing is that both of your main party members can have their own separate lines that you can choose and they can actually contradict each other. For example, one of your characters can decide to take her under your wing while other can decide to just ignore her completely. And if this happens, then rock, paper, scissors game start. Basically, you have to play rock, paper, scissors to decide which one of your character's choice will be the final one, which is amazing. And such things happen not just between your characters, but with other NPCs. For example, if you try to persuade someone of something, such game might start, and if your stats are higher, or if that stars, their stats are higher, it might play out differently. As an example, if, if your stats actually are higher than your, op opponent, than your opponent's one, for each win, you are getting more points. And if your stats are lower, for each win, you are getting less points. Meaning that they might need let's say four wins in rock, paper, scissors to win this argument, while you might need only two or even one. And it is it and it's giving you incredible variety of the story. And it is incredibly fun to play and making this world incredibly alive. You really have an ability to affect the world. And I'm not telling about the things that you can do. For example, you can actually steal anything that you want. Yes, you can literally steal anything that you want. And if you've been seen, you can actually get caught. And <laughs> one of the weird things that happened was that I got caught once, only one of my characters was caught because this one character was actually committing a crime while all the rest were doing all the job and just continued doing the quest. And with this one character, I actually encountered some type of demon in a prison and I made a deal with him by sacrificing one of my attributes to get out of the prison as quickly as possible. And the, the things like that, the small things and small details like that just makes this game amazing and fantastic time to play. And the thing that majority of the gamers in today's day and age are not encountering, they're simply not making games like this anymore. But then you encounter the strongest and the weakest thing in the game. I don't mean the weakest because it's weak. I don't, I mean weakest because yeah, a lot of people might stop playing this game because of this. And let me explain. And I'm talking about combat. Combat in this game is not real time. Despite everything that you do in this game is the real time, you move around the world, you do the things, the combat is actually a turn-based. So when the combat will start, you are actually going into this turn-based mode. And you are seeing the queue of actions. Basically on the top you see who will act after whom and well, you see exactly, you see exact queue. Now, every single action that you perform or every single one of your party members can perform, by the way, which you can have up to four, takes so-called action points. And action points are spent in anything that you do during the combat, in the movements, in skills, in attacks, in defenses, everything is using action points. And basically that means you don't have any type of mana or stamina. Your only resource is actually an action point and the cooldowns for your skills. Now, the combat itself is pretty interesting and pretty fun because you are using all the elements around you and you can actually use the elements in your arsenal to affect the game. As an example, if you see your enemy, one of your enemies standing in a pool of oil, First things first, this enemy will be debuffed by slow movement, meaning that it will take more action points for them to move the same distance. But if some spark or some type of fire attack will happen on this oil puddle, the entire puddle will ignite, igniting the enemy as well. And if your party member is standing in the oil puddle, it will ignite them as well dealing a fire damage. So now the enemy is actually burning. Or if your party member is actually burning, you can actually conjure the rain spell and take out all the fire. But now because you use the rain spell and just took out the fire on the map, a lot of things might be obscured with the water vapor. And if if your other enemies and if your other party members 
actually did not have fire on them, they will become wet from, from the rain. They will become wet from the rain. And if they're standing in some, some type of puddle of water and someone will hit them with an electricity attack, or even if you will hit the electricity attack in this puddle, the wet enemies will get an additional damage. So this type of interaction with an element and things like that makes the game incredibly interesting. Another example is if you have an enemies that are exploding, if it is raining or if they are wet, they cannot explode until they will dry out. So it basically delays their destruction or delays their devastating attacks. And instead of spells, you can also use a different barrels. There can be a poison barrels, there can be oil barrels, there can be exploding barrels, and you can use all of them for your combat. And, well, enemies can use them against you as well, so you should be very careful about that. And all of those things make the game incredibly interesting and fun to play. However, this combat is actually an issue as well. Don't get me wrong, I myself enjoyed this combat a lot. But this combat is not the same thing as, let's say, for an XCOM, where those encounters are actually more or less cinematic. This time, this time it's, it's not. It's not cinematic at all. It's fun to look at, but it's getting boring and generic pretty quickly. Especially if you have a lot of enemies to fight at the same time, and especially if you have a full party. The combat can actually drag a lot. And despite game trying to show and make every single combat encounter different, it will become boring for a lot of people very quickly. It didn't become boring for me, but today's gaming is far vastly different than the gaming of the past. I grew up on an older games and for I have the patience for such games, but I know that a lot of modern gamers will not have this. If you grew up on the real-time RPGs like on Diablo, on Mass Effect, on Elder Scrolls, you might find this game incredibly slow and tedious, especially when you have to manage a lot of things at the same time, like for example the health of your party members, which does not regenerate between combat. You actually have to actively manage health of each and every party member, which can become tedious. And this actually makes the game a bit more difficult to recommend. There's, despite of its amazing world, the amazing story and amazing dialogue and the things that you can do in this game, the combat, in my opinion, despite it being very interesting and a very fun part for me, I know that the combat will probably be the thing that annoys a lot of people. I know that not a lot of people are actually prepared for this, especially if you are from generation that grew up on Fortnite. Yeah, you are not going to find this combat fun. You will lose patience much quicker than you understand this. It is taking a lot of time to learn this combat and I know a lot of people that simply does not have the patience for this. I know that. It breaks my heart to tell that that this game is actually not for everyone and you need to be fully prepared for what you are going to see in this game and what you're going to experience in this game. Speaking of whether it's for everyone, let's discuss the pricing of this game. So the full price for this game on tier 1 is $39.99 and for tier 2 countries it's $19.99 on Steam. And during its sales it can go as low as $7.99 for tier 1 and $3.99 for tier 2. Now, what price do I suggest you to buy? So if you have never played any of this type of games, and if you have never played any type of tactical RPGs or turn-based RPGs, for the sale price, I would still suggest you to buy this game and test it for yourself and understand whether you want this game or not. Yes, this game has a sequel and the sequel actually costs more than this one, but for $7.99 and especially for $3.99, this game is absolutely 100% worth to test even just for the story and the world of this game. Yes, this is 100% worth it. But for any price higher than that, unless you know exactly what type of games are the turn-based RPGs, and you have played the turn-based RPGs in the past, unless you have done that, I cannot recommend this game. Yes, it breaks my heart to tell you that, but I know that you will not enjoy this turn-based combat if you're not ready for it. I know that. For the sale price, it's 100% worth it to test it whether you like it or not. But if you haven't done this for the full price, I cannot recommend. However, if you have played the older or older tactical RPGs, uh, like older for like old school fallouts or Plantscape Torments or, or, or even Baldur's Gate, if you have played these games and if you enjoyed it in the past, then this game is even worth for the full price. Even though I would not suggest you to do that, 
because the second part actually exists in mean, the original sin too but even for the full price for you if you are one of those people this game will be absolutely worth it and you are going to enjoy every single second of it and if you do how long you can actually expect from this game well you can actually expect at least at least 80 to 100 hours of gameplay from this game at least and you if and if you enjoy the combat you are gonna love every single second of it so yes overall verdict is this this game is amazing however i would not suggest this game for everyone and buy this game only if it's an a dip dip discount to test it out or if you know exactly what you are taking yourself in well this will be it for today thank you for being here with me let me know in the comments down below what games you do want me to review the next like the video if you liked it subscribe for more videos like this one and i'm gonna see you in the next one see ya